Guten Tag, WAP. This is Mr. Linegar. Let's make history today as we go over Unit 1, Day 2. We're going to continue talking about Islam. We talked about Islam in the Middle Eastern world last video. Today we're going to talk about Islam in South and Southeast Asia. Next class will be Islam in Africa. So let's get started with our daily punishment. Did you hear about the restaurant on the mood? I heard the food was good. I heard the food was good, but the restaurant had no atmosphere. <laughs> Space joke, because atmosphere. All right, so let's get started for today, kiddos. Your key terms are Muhammad of Ghazim, the Sultanate of Delhi, Hindu devotional cults, the Bhakti movement, Sikhism, Guru Kabir, Sri Vijaya, Angkor, Malacca, and Borbador. We're going to talk about the spread of Islam into South and Southeast Asia and the political and economic characteristics of South Southeast Asia during the post-classical period. So the Gupta dynasty was a dynasty we mentioned briefly last unit. They were a Hindu dynasty that does fall around 500 CE. After that time, India is going to ha have small regional states. They won't be centralized. After the rise of Islam in the 600s, Islam will gradually come into India. It will come into India through the Turks, who will migrate into South Asia, modern-day Pakistan, and will bring Islam with them. The Turkish uh, Afghani leader was Muhammad Ghastan. He's going to establish a Muslim dynasty in northern India, modern-day Pakistan, and he's going to make expeditions into modern India and bring Islam with him. He will create a Muslim dynasty called the Sultanate of Delhi, from 1206 to 1526. It's going to be a Turkish Afghan dynasty. They'll conquer northern India. Uh, it's not going to be very centralized. They're going to create the capital of Delhi, and the authority of the dynasty and the sultan will not extend past the uh, capital city. They will generally to tolerate non Muslims. Most, Muslim, most Indians will remain uh, Hindus as long as the Dimini the dimi, or the subjects, pay the head tax, the jizya. They will introduce the monetary system with coinage at the providence and district level. The Mongols and Timur the Lame will invade India later on, which will weaken the Sultanate of Delhi, and they'll fail to the Mughals in the 1520s. And we'll talk about the Mughals next unit. There'll be a latter-day Muslim Indian dynasty, which will be more powerful. This right here shows the Sultanate of Delhi. It takes over parts of Pakistan and northern India. A little bit of Bangladesh as well. Buddhism will decline during this time period, and this will benefit Hinduism. Hinduism will become more popular. Uh, it will become more focusing on religion and uh, kind of a less philosophical, less theor theoretical uh, Religion is not going to be popular if it just focuses on the caste system, on dharma and karma. You know, um, Hinduism is a very patriarchal, hierarchical religion originally. But during this time, uh, Hinduism will focus on uh, religion, devotion, spirituality. And they'll start focusing on some of the different gods in Hinduism, Vishnu, Shiva. Although we remember in Hinduism, they do believe that Vishnu and Shiva are... Uh, archetypes, they all represent uh, the universal soul, Brahman. Islam will spread into South Asia and India. It will uh, Conversion will happen slowly, gradually. Sufis will be the most effective missionaries. They'll often devotional, and they'll inspire a lot of people to convert to Islam. People likely to convert to Islam in South Asia will be women, the lower caste people, uh, the untouchables. There will be some people in India that will try to combine Hinduism and Islam. And this is something we're going to talk about throughout world history. This happens later on as well. But the two movements that tried to synthesize, syncretize Islam and Hinduism were the Bhakti movement and Sikhism. The Bhakti movement was a movement that taught there was no distinction between his Hinduism and Islam. It taught universal love, devotion. Guru Kabir was the important uh, Bhakti teacher. He taught that Shiva, Vishnu, and Allah were all the same person. This will eventually give rise to a new religion, Sikhism. And Sikhism is a religion that 
blends Hinduism and Islam as well. Let's talk about some of the post-classical civilizations in Southeast Asia. Sri Vijaya is going to be a civilization um, and it will maintain sea trade between China and India by their navy. Let me show you a picture of their map. Where is Sri Vijaya? Sri Vijaya is right here. It uh, makes up the whole peninsula of uh, Malaysia, Sumatra, Java in Southeast Asia, right below Vietnam. And they'll dominate the trade between the South China Sea, Malacca Strait, Indian Ocean. Angkor is going to be a civilization in modern-day Cambodia, so Southeast Asia. They'll actually be built by the Khmers. They'll have two capitals, a Buddhist one, Angkor Thom, and a Hindu one, Angkor Wat. They'll get a lot of wealth through agriculture and their rice surpluses. They'll be centralized near their capitals and feudal and more decentralized outside their capitals. The Thais will invade Angkor in 1431 and the Khmers will abandon it. Muslims will uh, arrive in Sumatra and they'll create a Muslim dynasty in Sumatra. That dynasty is going to be uh, one of the big Muslim dynasties is going to be Malacca. It's going to be the first powerful Islamic State. It's going to control trade. It was on the uh, Malacca Peninsula. It's going to dominate trade from multiple oceans and a Muslim Islamic dynasty in Southeast Asia. It will be destroyed by the Portuguese in the 15th century. This right here shows Malacca. Right here. Same thing again, you can see Malacca. Right here you see Khmer, right here is Sumatra. Islam uh, will spread in Southeast Asia. It will be slow and quiet. It will be restricted to the cities. A lot of times the nobles and the merchants will convert. There will be a lot of uh, syncretism uh, between Hinduism and Islam and animism blending all together. We talked about the Malacca Sultanate. It's the first Muslim uh, dynasty in Southeast Asia. It's going to be very wealthy. One of the reasons it is wealthy is because they control the Straits of Malacca, which is a little water bridge uh, in between Malaysia and uh, Sumatra. It connects the Indian Ocean with the Pacific Ocean. So they uh, dominate trade along the Indian Ocean with like Indian civilizations and along the Pacific Ocean, like with China. It is one of the most important shipping lanes in the world. Lastly, Borbudir is going to be one of the largest Buddhist structures in the world. They create the largest Buddhist temple in the world. And here are just some pictures of it. It is another Southeast Asian civilization. It's a city, and they created the largest Buddhist uh, civilization in the world, largest Buddhist temple in the world. This is a stupa, actually. It's an awesome stupa. All right, guys, that's all I have for you for today. Until next time, d -d 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 deuces, deuces, deuces.